But it's Pentecost Sunday, and Pentecost doesn't start at 6 p.m. tonight. Pentecost has already started. It's Pentecost that we're celebrating this morning, and so we're going to get started this morning. Is that okay? We're going to get started this morning. So we're talking about experiencing the power, um, making room for more this morning. We want to make room for more of what the Holy Spirit wants to do tonight. The difference between receiving the Holy Spirit at salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is this. At salvation, we receive the Holy Spirit's presence in our life. At salvation, the Holy Spirit facilitates the the saving process. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is with us at the point of salvation. Baptism, when it's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what does the word baptism mean? To be immersed, to be totally immersed. And so we are totally immersed in the ministry and working of the Holy Spirit. And we become empowered to operate in ways that go beyond human limitations. We become able to do through the power of the Holy Spirit, able to do things that normally we could not do. And so he prompts us to pray. He teaches us how to pray. He strengthens us in our time of need. He can minister to our inner man when we're hurting. He prompts us to make correct choices, although he doesn't force us. We still have free will, but he prompts us. Maybe you've experienced that. Your your convictions start to come into play that you should be doing this or not doing that or whatever. He prompts us as we allow him to be in charge. At salvation, we have the Holy Spirit, but until we are filled completely with the Holy Spirit through baptism, he doesn't have us. At salvation, we have him, but when we're baptized, then we give ourselves completely to him. Allow me to qualify that. In order to receive that empowerment, We have to be ready for it. And so I want to to talk through what the ministry of the Holy Spirit is and our part in allowing him to immerse us completely with his presence. Let's talk about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit remains with us forever. John 14, 16, and 17 says this, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. He lives with them now, but later will be in in them. So here Jesus is making reference to the Holy Spirit and his ministry among the believer. And that ministry hasn't changed. Nothing's changed between Pentecost and Acts and today. He still has the same ministry. It's important to understand his ministry so that we can appreciate its function and working in our lives. And so that we can cooperate with it. 1 Corinthians 6.19 tells us that We are the temple of who? The Holy Spirit. We are his house. And so the Holy Spirit wants to indwell the entire house, not just one room or not just one portion of it. He wants to indwell the entire house. The Holy Spirit wants to come and take up residence within us, not just for the sake of coming and taking residence within us, but for a purpose. He wants to fulfill a purpose. Luke 10 records the disciples receiving a mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit when Jesus sent them out two by two. Remember that? He said, you can go out and do everything that I've been doing. 
And the Holy Spirit was with them to do that. But at that time, when that job was over, when their ministry item was over, the Holy Spirit wasn't empowering them as such anymore. It was still with them, but the empowerment to do those things was there when they needed it, at the time they needed it, for the purpose they needed it. But now, the Holy Spirit, after Pentecost, he's with us all the time. We're empowered to do things all the time. And so he he told them that you can go and, and heal the sick and do all that, and demons were subject to the disciples through the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit is teacher and our guide. John 14, 26, but when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. And so he teaches us, and just like we were saying when we're young, we're reminded of the things that we've been taught. Many of the things that you were taught, Anne, in Sunday school and the songs when you were probably three years old, you know, come back to you in the moment when you need something. Those things come back to you. I don't know about you, but when, I, I, when I'm struggling with something or I, I, I have a decision to make or whatever, sometimes the first things that come back to me are the old songs. You know, we, we, we sing all the new things mostly today, but when I have those moments where, God, I need you, those old songs, the hymns, the choruses that meant so much in the moment come back to me first. Anybody else find that? And so the Holy Spirit, he teaches us, he guides us, and, and he helps us to remember the things that were taught. But that requires for us to listen to him. And follow where he is leading rather than where our flesh wants to go. If we're going to be taught by him, if we're going to be guided by him, then we have to listen to him. Just like our own kids, right? We can tell them things till we're blue in the face, but if they don't listen, then, you know... Sometimes they have to learn the hard way. But the Spirit will reveal God's will for us in every situation if we give him permission to do that. And then the Holy Spirit as a witness for Jesus. John 15, 26 says, But I will send you the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth, he will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. The Holy Spirit's main objective is to point people to Jesus. His main work is to make Jesus big. To make him famous. And Jesus tells his disciples that one important part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to act as witnesses for him. That's what we have to do. We are his witnesses, just like he told the apostles. You are his witnesses, now go. And the Holy Spirit's main function and purpose for empowering us is to be his witnesses. We're called to be a witness for him. And we can always be ready to fulfill our responsibility as believers, empowered by the Holy Spirit. We can always be empowered for that moment when I walk to the post office and, and, and I see somebody that the Holy Spirit just prompted me to go and say something to them. We can always be ready. And then the Holy Spirit as a representative of Jesus. John 16, 7 says, But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the Advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And so the Holy Spirit acts as a representative of Jesus. 
Just before the crucifixion, Jesus told his disciples that he was about to leave them, and they were filled with sorrow. But then he went on and told them, unless he left them and went away, the Holy Spirit wouldn't come to be with them in that close and continual fellowship, which would be much better than what they had now. The Holy Spirit comes in Jesus' name to represent him to every believer and to the world. And so he not only indwells us with his presence, but the presence of the Father and the presence of the Son also indwells us if Holy Spirit is there. And then Holy Spirit as sanctifier. 2 Thessalonians 2.13, God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. Now, what does sanctification mean? What is it? Okay, set apart. How does he do that? What, what, what's, what's happening when God is sanctifying us? He's changing us. He's chipping away at all the rough spots in order that we might be more and more and more looking like Jesus. And so if there's things in our life that don't look like Jesus, Holy Spirit has to chip away. That process isn't always comfortable. But the process of sanctification is allowing the Holy Spirit to say, you know what, you can't do that anymore. Or that attitude has to change. Because you're not looking like Jesus right now. And so it's allowing God's Spirit to change us so that we are going from glory to glory to glory all the time. First Peter 1 and 2. We have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through this sanctifying work of the Spirit to do what? To be what? Obedient to Jesus Christ. The Spirit prompts us to be obedient to his leading so we can look more like him. He reveals to each one of us the will of God for us individually. And he works God's will in us, which includes that process of sanctification. So another part of the Holy Spirit's job is to sanctify. Sanctification, it just refers to the process that God uses to do a work in us by his indwelling spirit. And that's a lifelong thing. There, there, as long as we're on this side of eternity, there's never going to be a day where we've reached looking like Jesus in perfection. Scripture says we strive for that perfection, but as long as we're on this side of eternity, we will not see that. But we strive for it because we want to look more like Jesus. The Holy Spirit is called holy because that's what he is, and his purpose in taking up residence in us is to make us holy too. We're called to be a holy people. Scripture says, be holy for I am holy. He's the sanctifier, the agent of sanctification in his life and makes us holy through it. And so if he's going to take up residence within us, we need to be willing to submit to that process of sanctification. And so we earnestly seek him. Hebrews 11.6, And it is impossible to please God without faith, Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely, or other translations use the word eagerly, seek him. Are you eagerly seeking more of the Spirit? Do you want that more than anything in your life? Yeah? Are you eager for it? Come on! We want more of the Spirit. We want more of all of who Jesus is. And we need to do it with sincerity. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is for sincere seekers. 
And you know, so often people want to, they come to the front and it's, it's like, well, I'll see if this works. But there's no sincerity as in, God, I want this. And there has to be that desperation. God, I want this. And God knows when a person is serious about seeking him. He knows everybody. And one question we can ask ourselves to see how serious we are or what our motives are is to ask ourselves, why do I want this? Why do I want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? If it's so I can get what I see Pastor Rick having with all the goosebumps he gets. Or, you know, if I can fall over like Ken. You know, that's not what it's about. We're not looking for the goosebumps. We're looking for God to come and fill us in fullness so we can look more like Jesus and to have all of who he is. Do I really want to be empowered to have the ability to do God's will in my life? Do you really want that? Do you really want him to do the sanctifying work that's needed so that you can look more like Jesus so you can talk to that lady outside the post office that's bawling her eyes out? And sometimes there's a timing aspect to this. You know, are, are we truly seeking for the, the right reasons or does God need to give us a little bit more time? And sometimes, you know, we wonder, why is it taking so long? You know, I, I come to the altar, I pray, I ask to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I've known people that it's, it's taken a year or two years until they're ready for it. But sometimes the answer to why is it taking so long is because God's waiting for us to give him our full yes. We can receive the baptism any time that we're ready. So the question is, are you ready to allow him to lead you and guide you and be the controlling influence in your life? And if so, you need to be aware that the Spirit is given for a purpose. And that purpose is so that you can be fully immersed in his presence for the purpose of ministry. To let him lead you down the, the path that God has planned for you. You might not know what God's calling is. You might not know what he's preparing you to do. But whatever his plan is, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is part of equipping you for that job. We're called to do something. Jesus told his disciples that they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit in order to be his witnesses. And God wants to give us the power to be something and to do something. Are you ready to receive that gift and be all that he's called you to be today? And then there has to be some expectation. Psalm 119, verses, verse 131, David said, I pant with expectation. Hmm. When I read that in, in this version, the NLT, I loved it. I pant with expectation. I am so full of expectation about what God you're going to do. How full are you with expectation for what God wants to do in your life? Are you full? Or are you just not quite sure? Be full of expectation. Our level of expectation often determines our level of receiving. If we aren't expecting much, then often we don't receive much. We have to raise the bar of our expectation. Do we believe God? Do we have faith in Jesus? Do we trust the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit enough to expect more than what we've had in the past? Do you expect him tonight to have more than what we've had this morning? Do you expect him tonight to show you more than what he's shown you in the past weeks and months? Are we going to have more Tonight, because we've all come with a collective expectation that is just dying to get out of us. How expectant are we? 
Is there enough faith in this room to carry the anointing of the Holy Spirit for signs, wonders, and miracles? And then the baptism of fire. Luke 3.16, John answered their question by saying, I baptize you, this is John the Baptist, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Many people want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they don't want the baptism of fire. What is the baptism of fire? It's allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our life to bring us out of carnality and into new levels of holiness all the time. We're growing as we allow him to chip us away and lead us and teach us and guide us and sanctify us. It's the crucifixion of the flesh, also known as maturity. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, meaning I have shared in his crucifixion. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith, meaning I adhere to and I rely on and have complete trust in, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. The Holy Spirit floods your life. He wants to move in and permeate every area. He wants to live in every room in this temple. But before he can do that, you must be willing, we must be willing to move out. Are you willing to move out so he can move in? Sometimes we just got too much furniture in there. We need to back the truck up and move out. And that's all a part of the process of sanctification. We're being transformed into the image of God, again, from glory to glory to glory. Our bodies are the temple, the residence, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And whatever we do with our bodies, whatever we allow with our bodies, will affect our ability to receive from him and partner with him in the works of the ministry or the works that he wants to do in our life. Romans 6, 11 to 14. So you should also consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, let yourselves completely or give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. So, use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Don't let sin dictate what this temple does, because it ultimately affects how we're able to respond and move and live and breathe and work with the Holy Spirit. And that includes our eye gates and our ear gates. You know what I'm saying? The things that we allow our eyes to see, whether it be movies, what we see on TV, what we watch in a room, whatever. What we allow our eye gates to see ultimately affects my temple. It affects my thinking. Those are things that I remember, I recall. My ear gates, the things that I listen to. What kind of music do I listen to? Do I listen to things that honor Christ? Or do I entertain mostly music, you know, that talks about marriage breakup and sexual sin and all this kind of stuff. What kind of music do I entertain? What kind of things do I listen to even when it's talking about movies? Am I listening to and partnering with by listening to 
cursing and swearing in movies. All of these things. Do I listen to gossip? All of these things enter our eyes and our ear gates and affect how we can partner with the Holy Spirit. There's a work to be done in the life of each one of us. We're all in process of constant and progressive change and growth within us by the Spirit who wants to fill us completely with his presence and his power. So if you're ready to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life, what does scripture say that we should do? Luke eleven thirteen. If you then, evil as you are, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask him? According to this verse, God has promised to give us the Holy Spirit if we ask. And that's what we're going to be doing tonight, is asking the Holy Spirit to come and permeate every part of my temple, to fill me with his power so that I can look like Jesus and go and do the work of the ministry. So some things to consider, and I'm going to finish with this. Things to consider. If we are going to be seeking a special encounter with the Holy Spirit tonight, we need to start this morning. And this is what we're going to do. Some things to consider first. Are you sincerely seeking him, either the baptism or just if maybe you've already been baptized just for receiving more? How many have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Sometimes we just need that fresh infilling. If you have been sincerely seeking him, then this can be your day. Has this been the cry of your heart? Have you been asking him before today? Has this been something that has been the desire of your heart? Number two, are you prepared to allow the fullness of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to impact your life? Will you allow him to do that? What does that mean? That means to take up residence within you, to teach you and guide you, to help you be a witness for Christ and represent Christ well, to allow him to sanctify you in order that we may become more and more like Jesus, to allow him to be the controlling influence in your life, to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Crucifying the carnal nature, leaving all worldly pleasures and pursuits behind. Number three, do you have an expectation that allows you to hope and believe God for a greater encounter with his presence as we seek his glory? What's your level of expectation? And number four, are you prepared to surrender everything and to clean out all the rooms in your temple so he can fill it? Are you prepared to back the truck up? Who's prepared to back the truck up? This morning is all about surrender. Surrendering ourselves in order that we can be ready for him to do his work tonight. You've all received a garbage bag. And I'm going to ask the ushers to pass out some strips of paper and a pen. I know this is a little bit different, but this is where we're being led this morning. The garbage bag is for a tangible representation of what we are about to do. Sometimes Jesus used tangible items, didn't he? So this is not out of character with Jesus. We're just going to put into action right now what we've been talking about. So I put up there what we're going to be doing. If you have answered, yes, I am ready. I'm ready for all those things. The paper that you have been 
that you're being handed out in the pen if you need one. We're going to take a minute and just think about or allow the Holy Spirit to bring to your attention some things that maybe you need to get rid of, whether it's attitude, whether it's a particular sin, whether it's, you know, things that you do or whatever, anything. If Holy Spirit is telling you, or maybe some of us already know, that if I'm going to fully back the truck up, if I'm going to fully give myself to the Holy Spirit so he can do what he wants to do, I need to get rid of this. And I want you to write it down on the slips of paper. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to think about that with God. Because we're getting ready for tonight. This is for a purpose, okay? This is a tangible representation of what we are doing so we can get ready for what God wants to do tonight. Do we need more paper? Who, who still needs paper? Okay, Steve, paper up here. Anybody else need paper? Uh, Jim needs some. Everybody got paper? Okay, I'm just going to give you a minute to talk to the Holy Spirit about some things that this, this is keeping me from fully receiving. Okay, just write it down. When you are finished, you can open up your garbage bag. And crumple it up, rip it up. But as you do that, say, God, I am committing to this. I am desiring to get rid of this. Talk to God in your heart as you do. This, don't let this be an empty exercise. Say, God, I am giving this to you because I want more of you. I want, I want to give all of who I am in exchange for all of who you are. And put it in your garbage bag. And Daryl's going to play a little bit of music back there. And I want you to come and dump your garbage bag at the altar. And we're going to leave it there. Because we're giving it. We don't want to take it home with us. And just spend a minute up here just worshiping and thanking God for what he's about to do in your life. Declare the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit to come and do a great work in you. And then, in a few minutes, we're going to close with a song that celebrates revival. Just spend, just spend a minute just thanking Jesus for what he's doing. We exchange ourselves, all of who we are, for all of who you are, God. We're more desperate for you than we are for the things that we are getting rid of. Do you have prayer after or do you have it now? I need prayer after. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that after. After? Yep. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Take a look at all this refuse. And if we don't bring this back with us tonight, what can God do? He can do amazing things among us. So now if I ask you about your level of expectation, has it risen a bit? Has it risen? Are you expecting more tonight because we've been obedient? Father, thank you for the privilege of being able to dump all our garbage at your feet. Hmm. We choose God, as was said, just to back the truck up and dump everything out of us that keeps us hindered from more of you. We want more of you than we want anything else. And so we do that exchange, all of who we are for all of who you are. And so, Father, we are looking forward to what you will do among us tonight as we gather. God, I pray that as we go through today, that you would fill our hearts with greater expectation. And that we would come and electrify this room tonight. Because we're all coming together with great expectation of what you can do. And so, Father, I thank you for the ministry of your Holy Spirit. I pray that it would indwell each one of us and empower us to look like Jesus and to do the work of the ministry. And for that, we thank you in Jesus' name. I'm going to close with a song that celebrates that revival is coming. Do you believe that? So celebrate as we sing. It's uh, one that we've done at Life Night, so some of you should know it. But let's celebrate and rejoice because God is doing amazing things. And then if anybody wants prayer, the altar is open.